Welcome to Asset Path and Machinery. Uh, today we're going to overview our iBeam software, which comes with all our CNC press brakes. So the software itself is the same for all our CNC press brakes. Um, the only thing that obviously changes is the tonnage of the machine and the length of the bed. So we're going to run through first of all the startup procedure with our, with our iBeam software. So it's just been switched on. We haven't touched it other than that. The first thing we need to do around the back of the machine is reset the rear light curtain. So that's what this light is here. So when I press that, it's gone out. We'll re we go back to the front of the machine. Uh, second thing we do for the startup, um, this is a, called a, it's a self-reference test. What this is, is doing is it's ref referencing the Y axis on the machine. Okay, so you have to do this every time you start up the machine. Okay, we're just gonna start the pump with that little green button there. We're gonna hit find reference point. And we're simply going to press the down pedal and hold it until it stops. That's finished by itself there. You can see it's gone to the main screen. So that's as, that's as much as is involved with the, the reference test. So we'll bring the beam back up now. The last thing we have to do, um, I'm sort of going to skip through this, um, is do a, a guard test. So these guards at the front here, they have to do what's called a stop test. Um, it's basically a it's a self-calibration test just to assure that the guards are working. Um, if they're not, they will air it out and you will know about it. So the first process we do is we hold the reset button on the left hand side here. We'll see the power drop out of the guards, we can let that go. And um, basically when we load up our first program, the very first drop that we do is going to complete that guard test. So what I'll just do quickly is I'm just going to load up a program. Don't worry too much about what I'm loading up, it's not relevant. I'll just show you what happens when the beam comes down. Okay? So when I drop it now, see how it's just stopped there? So that's the stop test. Okay? So we can bring it back up. Everything's ready to go now. So we can start operating our machine. You've probably seen the, the main screen there. So what we might do is we'll just reload iBen from the desktop. So whenever you first open iBen, this is the screen that's going to be displayed. We've got a few options down the bottom here, as you can see. So we've got access to the saved programs. We've got access to the tooling on the top of the machine. We've got access to the bottom tooling. And a couple of little extra things that we might run through another time. So we're gonna start a program. Um, I've got a little drawing here. Okay. So what we've got basically, we're just gonna do what we call a top hat. It's four 90 degree bends with a couple of short lengths. It's a little bit involved because there's some things you have to do to get the setup right, but we'll run through that now. So first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna open programs. We're gonna do new on the left hand, right hand side, sorry. We're gonna draw in, just dot to dot. Okay, the basic profile shape. This doesn't have to be perfect because as long as I've got the bends in my shape, I'm okay and I can change the lengths and angles afterwards. So we're happy with that. We're just gonna go okay. As you can see, this is now the profile that we've got here. So I'm gonna get this, I'm gonna get this right now by switching back to our model. And basically I can just tap anywhere on that screen. So if I wanna change an angle, I can just touch the angle on the inside there. You can see it says input bending angle. So we're gonna fix that up. 90 degrees. We're going to do all the angles first. 90 degrees. As you can see, they're all 90 degrees now. So we're just going to fix the length that we've got left. Uh, first one we're going to do 30 mil. That's going to be 40. Okay. Top one's going to be 50. Another 40. And lastly, a 30 mil. Okay, so that's the profile that we're going to bend. Um, just over on the sheet spot there, you can see the result. That's what we're going for. Okay, so once we've set up our profile, we have to set up the tooling and the material that we're using. This is all done down the bottom of the screen. So we can basically start from the left hand side. So we want the thickness of the material that we're going to bend. It's 1.5 mil in this case. The width of the sheet that we're bending, so this is 300 mil, I've already measured it. Uh, our material type, as you can see here, we've got a couple of options, mild steel, aluminium and stainless. Um, if you know the tensile strength of the material, you can specify. 
but generally these these three categories are okay to use. So we are bending mild steel, I'm just gonna go okay. I'm gonna select our punch top. As you can see, so 120 mil is the length of the tooling by 86 degrees, that's the angle on the tip. Um, it only comes with this one tool pre-supplied. The die type, the reason we have two in here is if you pull the V-block off the machine and rotate it, um, the orientation of the V-blocks will be different. Okay, so I'm gonna select this one. Now we're currently working on a 16 mil V, so if you wanna see what the V sizes are, you can just touch the numbers, and what that's gonna do is it's gonna bring up your chart on the right hand side which will tell you what what the v size is okay so we're currently working on a 16 mil v which is number one we're just going to hit select once we've done that again we're just going to hit select on the bottom right so that has selected our tooling now once we've got those five set up we now have a graphical display of our bends okay the last box that we have is our keep time uh, the keep time is how long the pressure is held in the bend. Generally, you want to keep that to a consistent number because it can affect the spring back of the material. So we're just going to go with two seconds, just as a, as a starting point. Now, the rest of the things we have on the screen, it might look a little bit overwhelming, but it's not too bad. So what we've basically got um, is we're doing four steps, okay? That's, so this is exactly the same as this here. So you can see we're doing four steps. Um, this is the position of the back gauge. This is the position of the bend. And then there's some additional stuff. It's lit up green to indicate that we're on step number one. Okay, and as you cycle through, you're gonna see it's gonna step to number two, it's gonna step to number three. So you can keep up to date with where you're at. Now, as you can already see on the last step there, we have an issue with our bend. Uh, the bend is obviously trying to bend something that's already bent into the v-block so we know already that that's not going to work now there's a couple of ways around that um, if you can modify the links of your drawing you can obviously do that or if you can use some different tooling to achieve it or as a, as a last resort basically we can modify the bend order to to allow this to work so what we're going to do is we're just going to go back to step number one now in this drawing, we can see the black line is the pre-bent section, okay, for that step. The red line is the bent section for that step. Now the reason we need to keep an eye on those is because when something's gonna crash, we need to know if it's gonna crash before it's bent or after it's bent. If it's gonna crash after it's bent, it's a little bit more um, serious because obviously uh, you can do some damage to your tooling depending on what you're bending, so you have gotta be careful. Um, but what, what we're going to do is we're going to go to our crafting section. It's called Crafts Edit. What this basically is, is th this is a section where we can uh, modify the bending order to, a, to, a, to allow us to bend something like this, okay? So on the left-hand side, we've got a couple of things here. We've got, uh, we can step through the bends. One, two, three, four. That's what the up and down arrows are. Uh, if we go back to step number one and hit simulation, it's going to step through all the bends. That way you can have a quick look at what's happening. Now there's a couple of things happening. We know the last bend isn't going to fit, but we know one and two will bend. Now because it's a symmetrical object, we can swap three and four to achieve this. So what we're going to do is swap three and four. It's as simple as going, tapping the number. So I've just hit number four and I'm going to hit Three. So what this is going to do is this is going to change our last bend to uh, third in the order. And what you're going to see is when I go back to the start and step it through, uh, I'll lock that on. One, two, three, four. As you can see, nothing is going to crash anymore. So the last thing we have left to do is possibly rotate the sheet. What that is, is you can be working on the inside of the machine or the outside of the machine. With something like this, it might be easier to work from the front of the machine. So we can just hit the little plate turn, which is the little red button there. As you can see, all of that has done is rotated the side that you're working on. Okay. So if we go back to step number one, so we're gonna go back to the start. Okay, so the first step's okay. 
The second step might clash inside that V, so we're also going to rotate that around to work from the front. As you can see, that's now going to be okay. Our third step is all okay. And our last step is all okay. So we're, we're basically finished with the, the bend order. We're happy with that. I can just hit finish. And what you're going to see is on one of these columns, these indicate that the sheet's being turned. Those are the steps we've made. And the column next to it is you can see the actual bend order that we're doing. So for each step. So you can see it's going to go, it's going to do one and two in order. And then the third step is going to be bent fourth. And then the last step is actually going to be bent third. So that's all updated into our program. Now I haven't mentioned what these columns are. So I'll just run through them quickly. What we've got here is the length of that step. Okay. The angle that we're bending on that step. Uh, the type of bend we're doing. Now this is uh, an air bend, so we don't have to touch that. This is the order that those steps are going to get bent in. This is the orientation of the sheet. This is a for back gauge correction. So for example, if you bend a length and it's not quite right, we can put in a correction in there to adjust that step. The column next to it is angle adjustment. So if you fold a 90 degree fold and it's not quite 90, we can put in some correction into there and that will save into that program, so you're always getting the 90 degree fold. Uh, next to it is a weight timer. Um, following that is uh, guard adjustment. So if you don't need the front and rear of the guards, you can turn them off. And the reason for that is if you're folding a box around the tooling. And then finally, this is an unused column, and then we've got the height of the V block. Okay. So if we go back, back to our model, um, basically, we're, we're ready to go. I'm, I'm happy with where that is at. The last thing we need to do is we need to do a 90 degree fold, see what the angle is like, and put in our correction. Now, obviously you can understand with variance between steel, there's always going to be correction that you need to apply to your bend. Um, there's no press in the world that can achieve a 90 degree fold the first time. Um, so what, that's the first thing we're going to do. So I'm going to start this program. Once I've started it, I'm going to put it into single. What that does is it allows, it'll automatically do our hold time and return the beam. Whereas when it's in jog, it's a full manual control with the foot pedal. So I'm going to come across here. I've got a piece of steel here already. So we're just going to do a quick fold on that. I'm just going to tuck that straight in the middle and you should be working from the middle outwards. I'm going to hit my foot pedal. Looking at this piece of steel, uh, it's just under 90 degrees. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure it. Okay, so it's about 86 degrees. So we need an extra four degrees to achieve our bend. So I'm going to come back to our screen. Now using this column, because, because they're all 90 degree bends, we're just going to put the same correction in all of these. I'm going to stop the program. We're going to select this box here, so this column here, we're going to put in four, and because we're working off 180 degrees, negative four is an extra four degrees of bend, okay? So I'm going to put that in all these boxes. Okay, so more or less, we're ready to go. So everything's set up, we've got a bend correction, we've got all our lengths set up. As you can see, we can see the graphic of where we are in our bend sequence. So what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to start it again. Again, it's going to position both my X and Y axis. You'll see those turn green once it's in position. So we're good to go. I'm going to put it back into single so we can use our hold timer and I'm going to cycle this through. Okay, so the first step is just up against the back edge. Okay. Now do be careful where you put the fingers. Okay. Okay, so that's our first bend. 
looking at the screen, the second bend, we can see again, so the black section is before we bend it for that step, so that has to be facing down. So that's the next step. I'll put that in there like that. Okay, just make sure it's up against the fingers. It's gonna fold up. Okay, so we've got that profile now, so we're about halfway. Uh, looking at my screen again, you can see we want that profile facing forwards, still using the back gauge. And this will be our last bend, so this is the one we've got to get right. So for this one, we want it facing in and up, like so. Okay, last one. Don't want my fingers in there. And there's your finished profile. So that's quite nice, um, but that's your end result. Now, I failed to mention this before we started. Um, once you have set this up, it will give you a sheet length that you should be folding. So the idea behind this uh, length here, which is 177.4 mil, this is the length of sheet you should be using so that when it expands under folding, it'll come out to the correct length on all your bends. So as you can see, we've set that all up. Uh, we've modified some bend steps there. We've put in some angle correction. We've used the correct sheet size, which I had already pre-cut and the end result was a nice piece of steel. Um, so that'll probably finish up the overview at this point. Um, thanks for watching.